Hello and welcome to a millinery retrospective video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm reminding myself of all the hats that I've made this year. From time to time I have a bit of a wobble and start to feel like I haven't achieved enough. So I wanted to make this video to remind myself that this past year I have worked very hard and made so many more hats than ever before. With every hat that I have made I have practiced my techniques and grown my skills. I hope that looking back at my work this year will inspire me and all of you to push yourselves and create even better work next year. So let's rummage through the hat boxes and get started. To start with we've got to wind all the clocks back to the very beginning of January 2021. And at the beginning of January 2021 I was actually halfway through completing a City and Guilds millinery course during which I made the following hats. We'll start with the felt lot. So in the City and Guilds millinery course you make some felt hats and then you make some straw hats. So with the felt hats I started off by making this little proper hat number which I have called a modal mushroom. Maybe I shouldn't have actually worn a hat in this video so I could try all them on but this is this is the modal mushroom. It's a 1960s shape with a pleated ribbon on the hat band. It was based on geometry and triangles. I love the ombre effect here with the yellow gradient down to the brown dark gradient. On the inside it's lined in an acetate lining finished with a ribbon and an elastic and it's a wool felt hat. I think if I was to make it again I would do it slightly differently because the crown isn't quite deep enough. It's not the most comfortable to wear because the crown isn't too deep it feels like it could fall off at any moment so if I was to do it again I'd create a deeper crown but then attach the brim slightly further up the crown so that it's got that lifted off the face look which was quite common with these kind of mushroom hats. The second model I made is this freeform beret which I moulded by hand without using a hat block and it's quite a difficult technique and I don't think I'd bother making this model again and to be honest I don't think it's my best work. I shouldn't have worn a hat, never mind. <laughs> we'll try them all on anyway. This is the beret and I believe I called it the brilliant beret because it's decorated with these lovely little Swarovski AB crystals over here in Fibonacci sequence numbers as you all know by now Fibonacci sequence my favorite number sequence in the entire world isn't it great on the inside to attach it to the head it's got my usual crisp veiling ribbon which I like to use in pretty much almost all hats that perch on the head and finished off with my label the next felt model is this little number right here which is a little percher shape which goes this way round I think, yes it does. It, I know it goes this way round because on the back of it it attaches to the head using the same crisp veiling ribbon and obviously where there's two bits of veiling ribbon that goes on to the back of the head. The key features of this hat is this veiling detail just over the top here and the way you would do that is you steam your felt and then you pinch it together as it's going over a block. You can either pin it or sometimes I even find that sewing it with a needle holds the pinching better and when it dries it keeps this lovely interesting detail which obviously is very difficult to repeat in the exact same way in every hat so every hat made in this kind of veining technique looks ever so slightly different and unique. Before making the straw numbers on the City and Guilds millinery course I made this bridal veil it features these lovely delicate little organza and silk dupion flowers with rainbow colored centers which I think is rather nice just so that it's not all boring and totally white and the headband that it's on is covered in velvet ribbon. For the straw element of the course I wanted to go all out and I made this absolutely massive hat. I actually think it's maybe a little bit too massive. I know that this is the kind of shape that turns heads and everyone looks at it and goes oh my goodness isn't it such a wonderful hat but if I'm honest 
My biggest problem with hats of this kind of shape is that they're not really everyday hats. You can't really walk down the street in a hat like this and go and do your shopping in Lidl. You would, I think, get too many looks and they wouldn't be the good kind. But making this hat meant that I could experiment with dyeing straws. This was a natural coloured vintage sisal straw that I dyed to an apricot colour, which turned out really well. The edge bind on this is my favourite technique, which is a fold over Petersham edge bind, which is really difficult to do with such a tiny, tiny ribbon. I think this is a um, 1.5 millimetre Petersham that I've bound over the wire on the edge over here. I matched it on the inside with an apricot ribbon band. It's head size, so that's how it sits on the head, so there's no extra head fastening. And it's decorated with this floofy silk organza bow with frayed edges, which took so long to make, but I do really like this detail. I think I'd like to rework this model because I don't feel like it's very me anymore. It feels a bit too... What's the word I'm looking for? Fussy. I like the big bow, but it's a bit too big. I like the elements of this hat, but the way that I've put them all together, it just doesn't feel like it fits me anymore. So I think next year what I'd like to do is to attempt it again. I've actually got another cape lean in my cupboard that is this same cape lean that's undyed. So maybe next year I will try and remake this. The last hat I made on this course is actually one of my favourites. I never thought that I'd be one for visors. But I got into tennis over the summer and actually, I really like this visor. <laughs> it's made using woven straw braid. I think it's called a star bright braid and the gold thing in it is mylar. So I've woven that together using a blunt needle and I'm hoping to make another one of these just to practice and make sure that I don't forget the technique. So hopefully next year, video coming on this type of braiding technique. And on the inside, it's covered in a Petersham ribbon, which is pink to match the fastening, which is monkey knots. And it's also got a little bit of buckram in there for some extra structure. But as I said, more on this to come next year. So be sure to subscribe to not miss that video. Moving on from the City and Yields Millinery course, the next hat I've got is this one, which is actually a model that I've made before, several years ago, but I wanted to practice it to make sure that I don't forget how to do the technique. Practice is super important. And this hat is made out of cinema, which is not my most favorite material. I enjoy vintage materials, and cinema has only really been around for hat making since I think the mid 80s and 90s. I'm not sure, I have to fact check myself on that one. But it's not a classic mid-century millinery material, so it doesn't sit close to my heart like something like straw or felt does. But it has its uses, and that use being, it's really easy to make these bias brims out of it. You can see these diagonal curves going. That's the bias in the brim. It's a piece of cinema that's been cut on the bias, folded over four times, so to make a kind of a cinema bias binding, if you will, but giant, very wide. I think I like I, I think I did about 30 centimeters wide on this one. And then you steam it and you pull it and you push it under the iron and you shrink one side and you expand and pull the other side, which is why you can see. The squares here are a lot smaller at the bottom of the brim compared to the top of the brim where the squares are a little bit wider and more spaced out. And then because it's cinema, it dries pretty much instantly so you can hand shape it without having to block it and let it dry as you would with something like straw or felt. So it enables you to fold the edges over and get this kind of lip over the top and then pop a little base into the inside there. On the inside, I've lined it because cinema does not feel nice against your hair. If you put on a hat that's not been lined, that's made out of cinema, and you've got a nice sleek bun or a plait or something, it's going to catch the hair and it's going to pull it if you're taking the hat on and off, and no one wants stray hair anywhere. That's not good. 
so always line cinema hats and it's got a little elastic on the inside as well as my label. I think this kind of shape is called a peach basket. It's just, just like this. <laughs> Moving through into the spring months of the year, which is when I think I first started uploading YouTube videos and a few videos in is when I made these two. I call this my bumper berry model. But these two models, they're made using a special hat block in this shape and I'm really pleased with how these turned out, especially with the fluffy feather pom-poms. I love all things fluffy. It was a few videos in that I showed a technique that I used on this one and the technique is the Petersham edge bind. I'll link to that video in the top right. We can't not talk about these fluffy pom-poms. They're made using Maribou turkey feathers. They already come as pom-poms, but I like to set them on little hat pins. So you can see here, it's got the little hat pin end sticking out. The next hat I've got to show you isn't one that I actually made, but it's one that I bought and restored a little bit. It is a 1960s Tricky by Edna Wallace hat. And I have a video on that restoration, if you're interested, which I'll link in the top right. I treated myself to this hat for my birthday. I've never seen anything like it before. I would describe this shape as a cross between a turban and a beret. I'm sure there's a better way to describe it, but that's how I see it. My favourite detail is how over all of these bumps, it's got these bias strips of probably silk red bias bits of fabric and it's got these loopy things which after doing some research I think these loopy things were a bit of a signature for Edna the maker of this hat. Next up is this interesting hat over here which I have worn once to a family barbecue and after wearing it once I've decided I'm still not quite happy with the design it needs a little bit of work. Remember what I was saying about the felt modal mushroom number over here. This hat was potentially going to have the same problem with a too short crown and quite a wide curved brim. So to combat that, I did what I thought I should have done on that felt hat, which is I've extended forwards the crown like this and the brim sits above it and it does work but I think I've got the orientation a little bit wrong. This is before I got my head around really marking the front and back of the hats before you take it off the block so that when you take them off the block you can join them up perfectly because this one it's not joined up straight and I think you can really tell so this is going to need a bit of reworking. In addition to that it's made out of seagrass which is quite a brittle and hard straw and so I wasn't really sure how I was working with it and I'm sure I could work with it better. Back to video content I made this very unassuming simple elegant pillbox hat which doesn't look like much but it's actually my replica of Jackie Kennedy's inauguration hat from the early 60s. To make this hat I had to make my own block because I didn't have a domed crown at that point that was quite symmetrical enough. The lessons that I've learned from this hat is that it is a simple shape and some hats only need to be a simple shape with no decoration and they work just fine. In the inside it's got a velvet bound comb which is another thing that I have discovered this year that I want to do to all my fastenings from now on is bind all the combs in the silk velvet fabric. Nice and simple, no decoration necessary and it still looks beautiful. Moving further through my video catalogue I've got all of these hats, these were all from one video, can you believe it? Just all of these hats in one video. That was very long to film, but so worth it because I absolutely adore how these have turned out. They're all using the same technique, which is cut the fabric on the bias. That's how you end up with these lovely little pleats on this teardrop. A little disclaimer about this particular hat, I never actually got round to finishing it. As you can see, it needs aligning. This is on my list of things to do. I don't think I'm going to have time to finish it this year, but it's still a pretty hat and the lining isn't going to take me too long. So I'm calling it a 2021 hat, but really it will be finished in 2022. In the same technique, 
I've got the same bias pleats on this pillbox and the inside of this pillbox is lined with a comb which doesn't have the velvet because I don't have any velvet of this colour but it's got the same silk dupe on that the pleats are made out of and obviously the same bow as the other hat but halved so that it fits with all the design elements of this series of bias pleated hats. And then I've got my turban which I'm wearing the white version of over here, so green, white, green, white. <laughs> I made this to match a pair of shoes. I think that's a pretty good colour match. There we go. And last and not least from the same video is this callow half hat, which has got the same kind of pin tucks as the green turban, except they are pulled across a callow half hat base, which is one of my favorite simple shapes to make. You don't even need a hat block to make something like this. You just need a poupee head. You steam the buckram over it, cut it out and decorate it how you want with fabric. In this case, I've used a silk crepe fabric, which I've cut on the bias, then put the pin tucks in exactly how I did with the turban and put them over the base. Finished it off with a knot on the side and some feather sprays on the side. We're most of the way through the year now in October. October, of course, Halloween month, spooky season. So I made this felt hat, which is based on the design of the bow baton school uniform from the Harry Potter films. It's got this point on the end, which once again, I didn't have a block this shape. So what I did was I got my block and I made the little triangle tip using sisal rope and you can watch that video right up here to learn how I did that. I thought that was a really interesting technique to try. I read about it in vintage books a while back and I've always wanted to try it and this was the perfect excuse and I think it's turned out pretty well. My freeform brim on the other hand, which is the brim on this hat, I think is a little bit flimsy and maybe not my best work. I think it looks okay, definitely, but it could have done with a little bit more stiffener. You can see it's, it's super foldy compared to the crown part of the hat. I have since making this ordered a block that is this upturned sweep shape. So I'm yet to try that block. Once again, that's a video planned for the next year. As usual, I'm always hoping to improve. So hopefully if I make it again, I'll make it twice as good as I did the first time. I've got one more Halloween themed hat from October which is this one over here, which was my Vintage Vampire Goth video, where I've always wanted to work with this kind of feather arrangement just to see how it would work. These feathers come on a bit of bias binding and they're all stitched together. So it's super easy to just take that trim, pop it on a hat, arrange it nicely. It doesn't need a lot of stitching. In fact, this is only stitched on the edge. In fact, you can have a look at how I made this hat in the video, which I've either linked up here or in the description box. What I love the most about this hat is these iridescent feathers, which change color depending on how the light hits them from green to purple, which is so spectacularly spooky. It's very fitting for the Halloween season. In November, of course, we've got St. Catherine's Day, which is an international millinery festival. And the symbol for St. Catherine are white lilies, which I've positioned on this straw bandeau over here. I've called this model Loopy for Lilies because it's got loops on the back of the lilies. And the straw base here, it's the first time I've ever tried to work with this kind of knotted straw, pulling it over such a small, tiny bandeau shape. It was a little bit fiddly, but I do really enjoy how it's turned out. I think it looks very romantic, very pleasing, and it's a great bridal look. And to match the hat, I also made a couple of hair clips, just because I think the flowers are so beautiful that they stand up by themselves without the need to be put on a hat. The next video I made after that one was my autumnal UFOs video where the point was is that I had a cupboard full of unfinished hats that I just wanted to get done so that I could make space for more unfinished hats and I have successfully achieved that. First off I've got this one which is my Bountiful Berries model with a spray that I made out of vintage berries and this veined technique that I have already talked about in one of my previous hats that I've already shown in this video. 
some of the other hats. I've got the Callow Half hats. This is a draped delight model that I first made in 2018 and I've been thinking about how I could improve it, how could I improve my sewing technique, how could I improve my general millinery technique of how I put the hat together and I think I've finally, after three years, reached a point where I am happy. I am very proud of myself for finally having completed this. One of the main things that I've learnt from making this hat is that I want to stitch the label into the lining before sewing the lining into the hat because that means I don't have to navigate the needle through the silk velvet in a way to make it invisible. But if you stitch your label to the lining, you avoid all of that nonsense. The other interesting thing about this hat is how to attach plastic decorations. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend using plastic decorations, but I came across these little plastic roses in a miniatures shop online and I thought they just looked so darling that they had to go on a hat. What, what is the point of miniature roses if you can't put them on a hat? So that's what I did, but of course you can't sew plastic roses, so how do you attach them to a hat? Well, you glue them to some felt pads that you then sew onto the hat, so that's what I've done on this Drake Delight model. More hats from the Autumnal UFOs video. I have this one, which is my bandeau blush model, onto which I've attached some silk organza roses. Again, I do have a video on making silk flowers without tools, so that'll be linked somewhere. Over the top of this bandeau, I have pulled some veiling. Normally you'd think, oh, veiling, let's make it fluffy and voluminous and big, but I thought, actually, I'm not a big fan of veiling. I always think it looks a bit fussy, so instead of using it as veiling, I've used it as a way to add texture to the hat itself. And I think it looks pretty lovely, contrasting against the light pink with the dark purple veiling. And I've also got the light purple flowers to match. This was my surprise hat. And the reason I call it my surprise hat is because I'm surprised at how well it turned out. When I started working on this, I thought, my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. It's going to look absolutely awful. I'm not a fan of bows in felt. I'm not really a fan of felt in general, but I do love this shape. And actually it's turned out pretty well. I think it's quite well proportioned. It's structurally sound. And actually the bow fits with the sculptural nature of this type of halo hat and it's turned out pretty nice and I have worn it out once. And now we've caught up with the winter season with all of my various variations on velvet holly leaves. I really enjoyed making this video because I love silk velvet. Velvet is my favourite hat material and this was an excuse to just use it everywhere. So I've got it on this velvet holly leaf hat pin, which I've pinned into a base that I made years ago, and I think it looks really nice. Then I've got a velvet holly hair pin, which is just a nice little accessory when you don't really want to wear a great big hat, but you just want a little bit of decoration. And then the stunning piece. This is the hat that I am the most proud of of this entire year. I love this wreath halo shape with velvet holly leaves with the little callow insert the veiling once again not used like veiling but as part almost of the structure and the way it perches on the head is really lovely it gives you this fantastical whimsical look i wore it on christmas eve and i really enjoyed myself even though it was just me and my husband at home but i enjoyed looking pretty just for me in conclusion throughout 2021 i feel moderately accomplished and i guess i should pick my favorite hat out of absolutely all of them and which one is that going to be? The problem is, is that I love all of them so much. Maybe instead of picking a favorite hat, I could pick a favorite technique, which is going to be the Petersham edge bind. I absolutely love it. I'm going to do it on pretty much every hat that I ever make that requires an edge bind. I love it, it's my favorite. And the number one lesson that I've learned is sew your label on into the lining before sewing the lining into the hat. That's all my hats from 2021. Here's to many more next year. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.